pericarditis is the topic and pericarditis essentially is inflammation of that out outermost layer of the heart known as the pericardium and the reason this happens is really a wide range of reasons but the two most common are idiopathic and some sort of infection usually usually viral uh, idiopathic of course means unknown cause there are other reasons why a person can develop pericarditis trauma for example or post MI after a myocardial infarction now let's talk about the symptoms how would a patient present well pleuritic chest pain is uh, the hallmark uh, presenting feature and unlike the chest pain involved in a MI this chest pain is aggravated by uh, movement or cough or breathing um, and also this type of chest pain is relieved when the person sits up and leans forward so that's a very important uh, distinguishing factor other nonspecific symptoms involved in pericarditis are fever, chills, and difficulty breathing, dyspnea. There is a very important physical exam finding for pericarditis that uh, you definitely need to know about, and it's known as a friction rub. And I encourage you to look up sounds on the internet of a friction rub. This is also sometimes called a cardiac rub. Other ways that it's been described in clinical vignettes include a leathery sound, and sometimes I've even seen it as a grating sound. So this is a very important physical exam finding. Diagnosis. How do you diagnose it? Well, mostly the diagnosis is really a clinical diagnosis based on symptoms and physical exam findings but there of course are tests you can do such as an EKG, a chest x-ray and an echocardiogram and if the person does have pericarditis there will be some specific findings. The EKG will show a classic ST elevation and PR depression. Very important to remember that and this will occur in most of the leads except one lead which is AVR. In AVR it will be opposite. It will be ST depression and PR elevation. Chest x-ray will show some mild cardiomegaly and the echocardiogram may show an effusion if there happens to be some accumulation of fluid. The treatment is very straightforward. Anti-inflammatory drugs any of them have shown to be equally effective such as ibuprofen, naproxen and then cases that are refractory to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs steroids are used such as prednisone let's take a look at some clinical vignettes 40-year-old man comes to the office complaining of a three-day history of mid-sternal chest pain, non-radiating that is worse with inspiration and relieved by sitting forward. He leads an active lifestyle. He has been running about 10 miles a week without problem until a week ago when he developed a viral syndrome. His temperature is 100, blood pressure is 130, pulse is 100, and respiratory rate is 20. He has a high-pitched grating sound that can be oscillated through the cardiac cycle over his precordium. An EKG shows ST elevation, PR depression, with PR elevation in lead AVR. Most likely diagnosis is. Well, you've got all the classic clues pointing to pericarditis. Next question. A 17-year-old boy who is hospitalized for depression on general psychiatric unit complains of severe chest pain. Patient um, has pain that is worse on inspiration and has been present for about two weeks. Past medical history is significant for depression with multiple suicide gestures for the past five years, seasonal allergies, 
review of systems is significant for recent bronchitis. Vital signs show temperature of 99, blood pressure of 120, pulse of 92, respirations of 10. Patient is disheveled but well developed. Cardiac exam reveals a leathery sound on systole and diastole. EKG reveals normal sinus rhythm and a rate of 95. Chest x-ray reveals moderate cardiomegaly. Prior report from a chest x-ray taken eight months ago states that the heart size was normal. Next step in management is. Well, he's got pleuritic chest pain. He's got this uh, very characteristic uh, heart sound on auscultation. Had a recent bronchitis, so there's that uh, recent illness. Chest, chest x-ray shows the heart is enlarged. He's uh, got all the telltale signs of pericarditis. And the first step in management is like with any NSAID, naproxen, ibuprofen. So the answer to this would be A. If it's refractory, then you might proceed with prednisone. And finally, 35-year-old man comes to the emergency department, two-day history of sharp chest pain that has become progressively worse. Pain increases when he is supine and improves when he sits upright. He has never had pain like this before and he denies dyspnea, diaphoresis, nausea, or presyncope. Upon further questioning, you discover that he had a recent upper respiratory tract infection that resolved approximately five days ago. Temperature is 99, blood pressure is 120, pulse is 95, and respirations are 14. Physical exam shows a triphasic cardiac rub. Chest x-ray is normal, and an EKG shows diffuse ST segment elevation and ST segment depression in AVR. Most appropriate next step in management is. Well, again, another classic clinical vignette showing pericarditis, and the first uh, line treatment is NSAIDs, so the answer would be choice A.